Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. George Baker here at my home in Dallas, Texas. I'm seated at my Haltrek virtual organ. This will be the fourth in the series of micro lessons in improvisation and the last one for 2022. As I mentioned in the previous video, the idea of a micro lesson came from Pierre Cochereau's Micro Sonata, a short three movement trio sonata that lasted about six and a half minutes or so. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the previous three micro lessons as well as future micro lessons in 2023. In this micro lesson, I'll talk about chapter six of my workbook for organ improvisation modulations, secondary dominance, and hymn reharmonizations. At the end of the video, you'll see a link to our web store where you can purchase your own copy of the workbook or one for a friend if you so desire. After all, it is a season for giving. Let me start with a true story. In July of 1975, I was at Pierre Cochereau's home in Nice during his Summer Academy of Organ Improvisation. His son Jean-Marc and I were about to drive over to Toulouse to record two LPs at saint cernin on the famous 1888 Cavaille Cole instrument. Pierre asked me what I was going to record on the LPs and I told him, Rager for one and American Works on the second. He said, oh, okay, what American Works are we talking about? And I gave him the list, including a little ditty that I wrote as a teenager called the Far West Toccata. He asked me to play the Far West Toccata, and I did for him. And he said its structure was very strong, but it needed more modulations. He was always admonishing his students to modulate, modulate, modulate. So with only two days before the recording, I added some new modulations to more distant keys, and as immature as the piece was, it was made better by Pierre's composition advice. Many beginning improvisers find themselves stuck in what I call tonic key prison. They just can't get out of prison. Ladies and gentlemen, there are ways to get out of this prison, and I want to give you some escape routes from this dreaded tonic key prison. That's why I think this chapter six material is so very important. We'll talk about ways to modulate today. So the first way to modulate is simply jump with your hands and feet to a new key. In other words, transpose it without any sort of pivot chord or chords. For example, we're gonna beat up a little bit today on O Come All Ye Faithful, which is in G at this point. Okay, and so forth. You get the idea, just jump. Jump, jump, jump to instantly modulate to a new key, okay? That's easy. The next way is our old friend, the circle of fifths. Let's hear some examples here. Starting, starting in C. second way the bass line went like this chromatically and we'll, we'll we'll talk about that in just a second okay great so let's 
Next, talk about secondary dominants. Secondary dominants are simply dominant seventh chords or proxy chords for the dominant seventh chord, like the augmented triad or the diminished seventh chord, resolving to a non-tonic key. So if we're in the key of C, for example, any other key besides C, the dominant of that key is going to be a secondary dominant. For example, for a great example, let's take an excerpt from Bach's Prelude in C Major, BWV 547. So listen how Bach goes from C7, or the C dominant chord, down the circle of fifths to F, to B flat seven, to E flat, yes, by our old friend, the circle of fifths. Notice how the bass line descends chromatically as we just showed a second ago. Now he could have continued the sequence, but instead he modulated back from the A flat chord to C. So here we go, box prelude in C, BWV 547, at the very end of the piece, here we go. Okay, so he went back to C. He could have continued on if he wanted to. But, you know, that would have been ridiculous in his case. Now, also, interestingly, he could have chosen the flat second Neapolitan chord, like this. Like he did in his Passacaglia. second is very cool. Could end up in the major mode instead of the minor mode. Okay, great. Let's continue on to the next point. Okay, guys, now let's go to box Takata BWV 540, the Takata and F. This is an amazing piece. It's a very virtuosic piece, quite long, 437 measures of music in this staccata. And in this piece, we have a series of secondary dominants in several spots in the piece. So here we go uh, at the end of this piece. <laughs> something like that, but, but instead he went on and matched his other sequences anybody? Yes, of course, it's B-A-C-H. Etc, etc, etc. 
and he's got that V-A-C-H all over the place in this piece. It's really a fantastic piece, and I love these deceptive cadences, uh, especially that one, that gnarly one toward the end. Fabulous stuff. Now let's jump into our time machine and move more than 100 years to Franz Liszt and his prelude and fugue on the name of B-A-C-H. We have the same B-A-C-H pedal notes as in Bach's Toccata, but instead of the dominant seventh chord in the hands, Liszt substitutes diminished seventh chords for the same purpose. And different from Bach is the resolution of the second diminished seventh chord to a B dominant seventh with a minor ninth instead of to the G chord. That's a lot of words. Let me show you in, in, in the music. So here we are towards the end of the piece. <laughs> Instead of like Bach did in his 540 a minute ago, Liszt uses that diminished seventh chord for a substitute or proxy for that diminished uh, for that uh, dominant seventh. sequence etc and one more one more for the third one turn the page and so on. Great stuff, isn't it? And obviously, Liszt revered Bach big time, as he should have. We'll talk more about diminished seventh chords in just a little bit. As we are now in Advent, let's talk about how Bach uses secondary dominance to modulate in his four-part chorale, Nun Kam der Heiden Heiland, from his 371 chorale harmonizations, our harmony Bible, as I call it. These transient modulations add interest and elegance to the chorale harmonization. Let's take a listen. Obviously, Bach loved that chorale because he composed several settings of it in his 18 great chorales. Now let's look here for the secondary dominance. First, here's a primary dominant. In other words, we're in B minor, so the dominant seventh would be F sharp major seventh, would it not? Go. 
now. G-sharp signifies we're going somewhere besides B minor, and in this case, on the way to D major by its dominant A. There we are in D. Okay, and then uh, one more secondary dominant in the last phrase of the chorale. That E sharp there going to F sharp minor, that the E sharp's the, the leading tone. to all my students to play 10 of them a day, every day of your life. Play 10 of them through. When you finish, start over. 10 a day, it's like taking a, a gigantic vitamin pill. Wonderful stuff. Highly recommend it. Okay, let's time travel again 200 years later to King's College, Cambridge, England where Sir David Wilcox in O Come All Ye Faithful, verse 7, used a secondary dominant to modulate to A minor in a most poignant 2-5-1 circle of fifths progression. The half-diminished seventh B chord on word never fails to thrill. I'll play the original harmony first than the Wilcox reharmonization. secondary dominant. Circle of fifths, B, E, A. Okay. It's simple, but it's so impressive, is it not? Please say yes. Okay, next up. In 1925, Marcel Dupre published his Complete Course in Organ Improvisation. It's an amazing, profound, and yes, daunting volume of concentrated information. In his introduction, he says that along with Bach and Handel, obviously, duh, Mozart, Beethoven, Mendelssohn, Chopin, Liszt, and Franck were also marvelous improvisers. Dupre tells us that to be a good improviser, one must not only have a fabulous technique, but also no harmony, counterpoint, fugue, along with plain chant, composition, and orchestration. Wow, that's a tall order, but Dupre mastered all these aspects of music, and we all know how his musical career turned out. In his treatise, Dupre tells us that there are two pivot chords that can take us from any key to any key. If we simply know how to use these two chords, we can forever escape from tonic key prison. These two 
magic chords are the augmented triad and the diminished seventh chord. Dupre calls them the symmetric chords because the first is made of a stack of two major thirds. <laughs> The augmented triad and the second is made of a stack of three minor thirds. Okay. Augmented triad and diminished seventh chord. Okay great we already saw Liszt modulate using the diminished seventh chord in his Bach piece. Look how fun it is to use a diminished seventh chord in its different inversions to go places far and near. But we'll just start on the C. Stick with that inversion, you got one, two, three other inversions. And so forth and so on. And the same thing for the augmented triad. so forth and so on. Okay? Let's go on to the next point. Oh yes, the next point. For more fun, let me mention that Olivier Messiaen's second mode of limited transposition is made up of the notes from two diminished seventh chords, a minor second apart. Let me show you. Okay. That's one transposition, and then if you go up a half step, okay, so forth and so on. I think that's very interesting. And one thing you, that you can you can do is use that concept of those uh, diminished seventh chords. And that, that sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? Very easy to do. Now for the augmented triad, let's look at Louis Vierne's delightful scherzo from his second symphony. Let me play two examples using the D augmented triad in this piece. First to modulate to the B flat major, then to modulate to F sharp major. So, the piece is in E, right, in E, so he's modulated for the second theme to using, he's got a D seventh chord, but then hear that? That augmented triad. And there he is in G for the 
this second theme that's so lovely. I love that second theme. Hope you do too. So. So he's modulated from G major up to B flat major via the augmented triad. And in this case, the A sharp in the D augmented triad becomes B flat, that inharmonic modulation that Franck used all the time. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, and then later in the piece, there we are, our D augmented in the first inversion. And then he goes. He's in F sharp major instead of B flat. Isn't that beautiful, guys? It's so easy to do, also. Check it out. Try it out for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, should you ever feel trapped in tonic key prison, know that you have multiple ways to escape using these principles we discussed today. Please use them and enjoy them. Happy holidays, everybody. And should you wish to order my workbook, here's the link. Thanks for your attention, guys, and I'll see you in the next video, which will be in 2023. Happy New Year. Woo!